Hi, I'm Chad Lawson. This is a Raspberry Pi, and you're watching Verbose Mode. Welcome back to Verbose Mode, the show dedicated to learning to learn and the freedom to fail. I'm Chad Lawson, and today being Pi Day 3.14, March 14th, I thought we'd do a special Pi Day episode of Verbose Mode and talk about the Raspberry Pi, what it is, uh, kind of its history and how you can use it, the projects I'm using it in and seeing with others. And I thought this might be a great opportunity for some of you who have heard about the Raspberry Pi but haven't played with one yourself to kind of get an idea of what this is all about. I want to start off by showing the Raspberry Pi uh, its original form factor. This is the Pi B. There is a uh, Model A. I don't have one, so I'm showing you the B. I'll show you a picture of the A for comparison in a little bit. Um, but we've got uh, micro USB for power, we've got HDMI for connecting up to a television, Ethernet, two USB ports, a um, headphone jack, composite video. But really what makes this board unique is we have these two con ribbon connectors for camera and display, which I'll show you when we talk about accessories, and also this, this 2x13 array of pins that are called uh, GPIO, General Purpose Input and Output, just like you would find in a Arduino, another microcontroller, or other embedded system. These are what we use to connect physical devices to the computer to be able to uh, take input or to turn on lights, motors, etc. So this is what uh, creates from just being a simple computer to an embedded system that we can interact with the physical world. So this is uh, Raspberry Pi celebrated its fifth birthday just recently and uh, it turns out we're the ones getting the gift out of the whole thing. So the first Raspberry Pi that we have here it quickly it, it, it snowballed very quickly into being in everything. It became the go-to project because now all of a sudden, instead of just having a microcontroller as the Arduino had burst onto the scene and revolutionized microcontrollers and, and a new world of projects, the embedded having a embedded Linux system, an embedded computer, we now can do way more than we could with a simple microcontroller. And so this this became the was the original form factor, uh, amazing little device. But it didn't stop there. They kept going. And in short order, we had the Pi B Plus. So this is the new form factor. We still have our micro USB for power, HDMI. Our headphone jack is now over here. We still have our ribbon connectors for our display and camera. We've gotten rid of the the composite video, but um, it, you can create your own jack and, and add on to the board, solder on if you really want, but it wasn't of something people were using. So, uh, but we have four, if I didn't say it, we have four USB connectors now. So, and one of the other amazing things is whereas the original B had the SD card on the back as its hard drive, we now have a micro SD card on the back. So now all of a sudden we have a lot more or I should say a lot less space protruding from the top of this. And instead of having a 2x13, we now have 2x20. We have additional GPIO pins for power ground for various connections. And so this, this became the new king, still a $35 computer, exactly the same as the B+, plus, or sorry, as the B, the B+, plus was $35. It just uh, replaced it for the same price point. Now, they didn't stop there. Uh, it wasn't long before we had the Pi 2, and the Pi 2 massively increased in terms of processing power and memory. Same form factor, same $35 price point, but now just a much more powerful machine. They didn't stop there. Uh, it wasn't long before we had the Pi 3, and the Pi 3 uh, did something absolutely amazing. Uh, for my projects that used a Pi, I'd been dedicating one or uh, a USB port to having a Wi-Fi little dongle to be able to connect up to, to the network. The Pi 3 has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built directly onto the board. So now for that same $35 machine, I don't have to add the extra accessories to get connected to the network. This can simply go into a project and it's already gonna be connected to the network already. But but that's not all. So in addition to this, there's a, another type of device that they created called the Pi Zero. Uh, just to show this in comparison to the 
to the B, this is a much smaller device. Uh, we have micro HDMI, we have our micro USB for power, and what's called micro uh, USB, it's a what's called OTG or on-the-go USB support. So instead of having a traditional type A connector, uh, we can use a dongle uh, like this one or an adapter that will allow us to connect into this and we can also have hubs to be able to attach. Um, we still have our micro SD for our, uh, our hard drive if you will and we still have the 2x20 GPIO array but now instead of having the pins already on the board they don't come soldered on. You can, you can get your own header and add it on but a lot of people, for this size, you might want to put this into something extremely small and you don't want the space being taken up with that header. I mean, look how thin we're talking. So uh, you might want to just solder into the one or two connectors that you actually need rather than having the entire GPIO array. But as you've heard me say, they didn't stop there. Uh, it wasn't short after, shortly after this. Oh, I'm sorry, I do need to say one important thing about this. This tiny little computer, $5. For $5, I have an embedded computer that I can put into projects uh, that just is an that it blows the doors off of anything I had when I was a kid. Let me put it that way. Uh, but we now have uh, some additional modifications to the Pi Zero. This, just like the, the B Plus superseded the B and the Pi 2 and the Pi 3 superseded uh, and replaced their predecessors, this new version of the Zero uh, has added this additional connector at the bottom. This is a smaller version of the camera connector that I mentioned on the, the, the B form factor. And again, I'll show you the cameras when we get to the different accessories, but now I have a camera connector. So I've got this amazing small little computer, still $5, and uh, I can do all these wonderful things with it. But they didn't stop there. So as I mentioned, we just recently, uh, last week, week before, had the Pi's fifth birthday. So happy birthday to the Raspberry Pi. They gave us the gift. And here it is. This is the Pi Zero W. So where uh, the B and all of its various versions uh, just kept replacing each other and kind of the evolution, these are family members. So this is the Pi Zero W. The W stands for wireless. Just like the three added Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, we have directly on the Zero W, we have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. So now uh, I can just go ahead and embed this small, tiny little thing into a project. And without having to use an adapter or a dongle, I can attach, I can connect this up wirelessly to my network. <laughs> and it just becomes an amazing little device. I've still got my, my GPI opens and everything. Now, uh, like I said, this one does not replace its predecessor. These are two, uh, because instead of, this is a $5 computer. You can't beat a zero at five bucks. I can't even buy a wireless adapter and dongle and everything I need for five bucks, let alone wireless and Bluetooth. So this is a staggering increase in price to $10. I mean, so for an extra five bucks, I now have a computer that I can connect wirelessly. I can connect to through apps on my phone uh, and interact with in Bluetooth for ten dollars. You, this is just absolutely amazing. And I would love to say, but wait, there's more. Uh, we're not there yet. <laughs> they, would this just happen? This is brand new, and I'm still getting my head around this and and figuring out what I'm going to be using this for. Uh, I've got a project I'm working on right now where I'm putting a spy camera in a birdhouse out in my front yard. So I'm going to be able to, uh, but by using the Zero W, I can now completely compartmentalize this and make this smaller. And it's it's just absolutely amazing what the Pi Foundation has continued to give us. Um, I mentioned the accessories, and I should, guess I should talk a little bit about those. Um, those two connectors that you saw, uh, the one ribbon connector was for this display. So this is the Pi Foundation's touchscreen display. Now there are other people that have developed, uh, if you look at Adafruit, SparkFun, there are other Pi, uh, I'm missing their name, Pi Moroni, Pi, Pi Mani, uh, sorry, I, I just recently found you and I love you, so if I'm slaughtering your name, I'm sorry. Uh, there are other people that have created touchscreen displays that connect up through the GPIO pins, but this was the one made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation and its connectors 
I can take my my B, attach it here, and using the GPIO pins for power, I can power this display, or sorry, power, I power, yeah, I can power one with the other, I should just say. And then I've got my ribbon connect cable. And now for roughly the size of a, a large Android tablet, or a small Android tablet, large Android phone, take your pick, or a little bit smaller than an iPad mini, I have a touchscreen display that I can now add to my projects. Uh, don't mind the bubbles. The, I've still got the protector on this thing. Uh, I haven't taken that off yet. Uh, additionally, I mentioned the cameras. Uh, I'm going to show you this one, but it's already embedded in something. So this is a uh, this is the ribbon cable going down through a hat. I'll just talk about in a second. But this is a little camera camera module. This particular one, the original one I believe was five megapixels, and if memory serves, the new ones are eight megapixels. So there's two different types of the camera. There's the regular camera is embedded in this project, and the one that is going into my my bird project, uh, it's a what's called a no IR camera, and that means that it doesn't have the infrared filter. Most cameras will block infrared light. Uh, so that way, and I, because I'm a giant geek, I have my Star Trek Phaser Universal Remote from the 90s. But as you can see here, when I push the button on the remote, it's it's communicating to the television, the VCR, uh, for all I know, CD player or whatever I had at the time, uh, using infrared light. This particular camera that I'm using as my overhead doesn't have that infrared filter either. Now, the upshot to that is that I can take... Uh, a couple of infrared LEDs and make a essentially a spotlight array and this becomes exactly the same technology you're going to see in any given security system but for a five dollar computer a handful of infrared LEDs I've now made what could easily be a two hundred dollar surveillance camera uh, for myself for under twenty bucks probably closer to fifteen even less than that so we continue to have all these uh, and then I'm uh, these amazing accessories from the cameras to the uh, to the display and so forth. But I want to go back to showing off, whoops, bring it back to this. I mentioned those GPIO pins and being able to interact with the physical world. And I couldn't think of a much better example uh, than this. This is the Pi Foundation Sense Hat. It has built into it a chip that is an accelerometer, accelerometer, gyroscope, magnometer. I probably slaughtered that. Basically a compass. <laughs> so it can detect, it can sense its where how it's tilted in three dimensions as well as which way is north. It also has a sensor for air pressure, for temperature, and humidity. So this becomes a full environmental sensor board, almost like my own little tricorder. Uh, and I've got this little joystick here as well that has a little button. But I also have this 8x8 array of RGB LEDs. So while I'm not, I could probably make a little scrolling marquee to as a readout. This isn't going to be like amazing graphics or anything like that. But it gives me a way of um, interacting outward with the real world uh, from there. And so this just connects up through my GPIO pins. And it itself has uh, a stackable header, so if I wanted, I could put an additional hat on top of that. You already saw a little bit of the one that I'm dealing with right now. Uh, I've got this little uh, tilt tilting mechanism using a couple of servos so that I can have a camera that I can orient with the software to aim wherever I want. I'm also going to be adding an, a light to the outside of this. Uh, this is going to be attaching to my 3D printer. And that way I can have this running uh, what's called Octopi. It's a 3D printing management software. And this is going to connect up to that so I can be elsewhere within the house instead of having to be in the basement, where quite frankly it's a little cold right now. I can, I can, be, in the, I can be elsewhere in the house and see how my print is going and actually watch it. Rather than just seeing where it's supposed to be, I can spy on the camera and see if it's detached itself from the print bed yet, uh, as, as some of my prints have been known to do. I'm also I'm working on a number of different projects, and the one that I'm really looking forward to showing you in the very near future is my internet radio. And um, I've, I've tried a couple times in rehearsal to get this interface into my overhead camera, and it doesn't work, so I'll wait and show you on that. But I've got a couple of rotary encoders and my own custom-built uh, light strip to, to indicate the channels. But uh, let me show you some of the different projects that I've seen other people creating. Uh, let's switch back to this camera. 
so these are just a few things I grabbed off of instructables.com. So this is by no means comprehensive list, uh, and I will have all the different links to all these in the show notes. But here's an example of somebody took an old office intercom and embedded a Raspberry Pi speaker to microphone into it. And there's an open source version of Alexa by Amazon. So uh, much like having your own personal assistant, now you can put it in that old intercom like you're straight out of Mad Men or something. Um, another person has built a solar powered uh, weather sensor. And so they've connected this up. So now they can they can read the, the weather in the environment. Uh, it's powered by, so, by the sun and uh, stream all that data and collect it from wherever they've got this particular device mounted. I gotta love this one just a little bit. Somebody took an old classic lunchbox. I had the metallic lunchbox when I was a kid, the one that you could probably get tetanus off of and, and uh, brain somebody with if you weren't careful. But they took it. They took an old lunchbox and added in a screen, uh, a wireless keyboard, and with a Raspberry Pi. And now in the form factor of a lunchbox, I have a computer, a computer that beats the, the pants off of anything I had as a kid and took up half of a desk. Now, I, that display that I showed you is almost exactly, and I don't know if this is intentional, but it is almost exactly the, the perfect size for what is called a double-din uh, car system. So your your car stereo that has a, has a navigation display, uh, there's two form factors, single-din and double-din. And so you could put a uh, build-your-own-enclosure, and with that display, build, as you see here, a car computer. Power it right off of the, the in-house uh, in-car power and have have a system and there are people that have already created uh, dongles that will connect up with that OD, ODB port 2 port on your so you can read the diagnostics right off of your car as to what's going on and it opens up an entire world of being able to have in-car computers with a Raspberry Pi. This is a fun little frivolous one. Somebody has built a Raspberry Pi mining, a Bitcoin miner. Uh, the four, the little dongles that you see connected with the little Bitcoin symbol on it, those are what are called ASICs, application software in chip. And the so it's somebody has developed a chip that runs the hashing algorithm for Bitcoining, Bitcoin mining. And then they've added this little uh, display to the Pi so that the Pi is driving all of these ASICs and handling the Bitcoin mining process. Now, a few years ago, uh, the Raspberry Pi didn't have a lot more power to it, so it, it wasn't going to be able to make a lot of uh, a lot of this for you. And <laughs> even though it's got a lot more power now, the, the entire Bitcoin process has become much more complicated. You're not going to make a ton of money off of this, but it's kind of a really neat concept, I thought. Uh, I mentioned that I'm working on an internet radio project, so I had to show off somebody else. Whereas I'm taking an old vintage tube radio, and I've gutted it, and I'm putting a Raspberry Pi inside it. Somebody else took the idea of that classic look of a tube radio, those that those gorgeous old radios, and built their own, and put the, a Raspberry Pi in it. And this one is doing uh, Google Play Radio, Google Play Streaming Radio, gorgeous system. And you're going to find a lot of people have been dealing with arcade cabinets of some kind in some some shape or another. This is a great little barca barcade cabinet uh, using, you know, you've got the joystick buttons. And there's a system out there called uh, RetroPie. It is a arcade emulator. So, I mean, my Raspberry Pi may not be ultra powerful. I may not be playing uh, Overwatch or any Steam games on this. But this is way more powerful than the arcades cabinets of my youth. And so people have been embedding those uh, those systems into here. And here's another form factor using a mobile version of that. In fact, this is so common. If you want to get involved in this yourself, because I think gaming is something that speaks to everybody. I think games are really a great way for us to learn. Adafruit has not one but two different systems where these kits, where they have created a custom boards to be able to connect up to your Raspberry Pi as well as a good display. Uh, this form factor looks as like the uses a Pi B and looks like the Game Boy of the 90s that I had, although with a much more gorgeous display and much more, more capable. And then a smaller form factor, kind of like your, uh, not quite the DS, but you know what I'm talking about, that smaller form factor. This one uses a Pi Zero as its hub. So a lot of people are using the Raspberry Pi for, for gaming, for other different projects. I'd love to know from you, please. Uh, tell me what you're using a Raspberry Pi for, if you're using it in your projects, or what do you want to use it for. Uh, we can have the conversation here on how you might go about doing that. Uh, let us know on 
Twitter at Verbose Mode TV, and we'll cover it in an upcoming episode. Uh, I also want to take a moment and talk about the the OS. Most of the Raspberry Pis uh, that I've seen out there are using what is called Raspbian. It's a special build of Debian Linux for a Raspberry Pi, whereas the computer you may have on your desktop or your laptop is using an Intel-based chip, most likely. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is using an ARM, which you might find in smaller embedded systems like your, your smartphones uh, and smartwatches. It's a lower power chip, so they have to have a special version of the operating system for that. There is also a version of Android compiled for the Raspberry Pi. So you can run, you could take that screen I showed you and build your own Android tablet with it. Uh, people have, have done so, it's fantastic. Uh, but also there is a version of Windows 10 called Windows 10 IoT for Internet of Things. It's a special version of Windows meant for being in an embedded system and playing with that idea of having devices that their job is to be connected to the internet and either receive information from the internet to take action in the real world or take information from the real world and send it out to the internet your your weather sensors and so forth that you saw earlier so if whether you're windows android linux there's plenty of ways for you to play with this and in a system that is uh, beautiful and familiar to you and whether it be a 35 dollar pi b or a uh, $5 or $10 Pi Zero or Zero W. Uh, let me take show you then the entire family as we have them right now. This is directly off the Raspberry Pi site. So you can see the, the right, the two right items on the top row are my Zero W and my Zero. Uh, the two, the left column is my B and Pi, sorry, my Model B, Pi 2 and 3. The difference of course being adding of the wireless capability. And then the bottom row, we have our A and B. So there in that bottom right hand corner is where you can see the A, the form factor that I don't have to be able to show you at this time. So hopefully this has given you a good idea of what it can do and what it can do for you and what I'm using it for. And uh, we'll we'll talk more about it as I, I release my various product projects and we'll have them here. Like I said, please take that time to let us know how you're using it. And we'll, we'll see you in an upcoming episode. Find us on Twitter at Verbose Mode TV, through our website, verbosemode.tv, here on YouTube. Find us as Verbose Mode TV, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.